What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend, a debrief, an effort to send biblical truth. What better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson. He's back with me in the host spotlight, Mark Francis. Mark, good what to see you, What is up? Buddy. How are you? Good. How are you? I, I love sitting here with you. You know, we get a chance to collaborate and talk. And if I sit in that seat, I feel like there's a piece of me missing, Caleb. So I, I appreciate <laughs> I, I you. I don't know about a piece I, of you missing, yeah, but... Yeah, just being here with you. You're wearing That's your Keystone your shirt and... Living yes, large. Yeah. yes. And with us, he's been here before. We don't exactly remember when, but he's back. Uh, Pastor John Morrison. John, how you doing, buddy? Good to be with you guys. Good, good. My paths have crossed with him more frequently as of the last couple weeks. He actually came with his wonderful wife, Diane, to Keystone. Yep. They were able to come cool. speak to us and kind of get some exposure to some of the pastors in the ministry. And so there's relevancy to your shirt. There's relevancy to the shirt. There you uh, go. There you go. But yeah, the body's coming together. Guys, let's go ahead and jump into a Sunday in review. Much to talk about. John is here this past week preaching. He'll be up again next Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so, Mark, I'll kind of come your way first. We'll do this thing. And, and Pastor John, we might have an opportunity to see if there was anything you didn't quite get to or elaborate on uh, from up front, and we'll kind of go from there. So, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're hitting Romans 12, 1 and 2, which Mark preached on the week before, mm -hmm. which, as you referred to, John, he did a great job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and so now what's left for you? But right. there is plenty. And so yeah. I love the, and in our community group, I'll dive into that in a little bit, love the corral concept uh -huh. Good. of Good. It, that, not that it's borders, but what are the benchmark moments in, in each of our lives of where we could see God revealing more of himself to us, to yep. me personally, yep. to you and the yep. stories you have yep. to, to be able to shape us more into his way of thinking mm -hmm. instead of ours mm -hmm. or the world's. Yeah. And um, I, I love that. This is one of my more favorite passages anyway, mm -hmm. um, Romans 12, 1 and yep. 2. And it's been a linchpin for me, which I can get into. But that to me is, is just a marker of seeing how God's word can impact our lives. Yeah. And, and I know in the course of the overall con corporate gathering, or the singing time really focused on that as well, mm. and, and looking to God's Word and how that can shape and transform our lives mm -hmm. by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. knowing God more to me is key, and that was my mm -hmm. big takeaway mm -hmm. of really leaning on His Word and, and seeking God to transform us and not be stuck into the world's view. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, thanks for that. And it's, yeah. again, the corral, yeah. cons um, again, Something about our church loves diagrams. It was a couple weeks ago <laughs> where Mark Carey explained how he created and custom did a, a diagram by Explaining himself. Explaining Israel uh, graph. Yeah, yeah, and how he got a piece of paper and drew and cut and paste. And it was like back in like preschool days, he was putting together a diagram. So I don't know. This what, one was better. What did the diagram, how did, how did that come to be, John? Did you do that yourself? Did you have help making the diagram? No, actually that came a number of years ago. Um, I was discipling some people in Houston, and, uh, and they were relatively young believers, and we were trying to decide what are some core things we want to hit. Hmm. And they were college students. Uh, I had a counseling ministry and a radio ministry and a um, local church ministry there in Houston, and, and uh, they had asked me, would you just maybe give us like a, like a weekend, uh, like a intensive for a weekend what would be some things that we could base our whole lives on at this strategic time in our life and so i thought well yeah i don't know what wow. i'll do but yeah. i'll do it so in preparing for it actually um i was just reflecting on my own life in college hmm. and i was reflecting on when did god not only save me but when did he shift me from where I would say I was a believer in Christ, I had received the gift of eternal life, that is, I'm a, a receiver, to the point that I actually became a giver. When, hmm. when did that happen that I moved from believing on Christ to being a disciple who follows him and who actually looks for opportunity to minister? And I, I, those four passages came to mind. Hmm. And so hmm. when I was trying to convey it to them, um, we were talking and they're listening and they're asking questions about each of the passages. And all of a sudden I went up on the blackboard and I said, it's kind of like this. And I just drew this corral and I said, it's like over the last 13 years of my life, I've lived here. Huh. This is where I've lived. And, and it's not limiting in a bad way. It's a safety thing. Mm. You might be able to add other things, but these were riveting for me. Well, then for them, they were like, 
that is helpful. They said that kind of gives us. So I actually haven't thought about it in 25 years <laughs> or wow. so. But it just um, it holds up. When I was thinking about Romans twelve two, it popped in yeah. my mind. Well, yeah. it it holds true now because you actually challenged the congregation to think, what is your corral? Yeah. You know, you you were speaking to these four passages were relevant to you. Yes. Of how God was shaping yeah. and, and con transforming your life. We all have different stories. Mm -hmm. I have a different story. Mm -hmm. Caleb, you have mm -hmm. one. And last night at community group, we were able to just on the spot. I called out the community group yeah. and said, "Give me at least one passage." Yeah. And. Plenty just gave one or two or even three passages yeah. that shaped yeah. their their lives. And it was yeah. just encouraging yeah. to, to hear the people's stories, to know that that's what it was. And for me, my my answer, the verse that has most shaped my life is Romans 12, 1 oh, wow. and 2. And and the, the story behind it for me is, you know, I'm a worship leader. The word worship is here in this passage. Right. And and I grew up in a, in a church, uh, lots of stories to get into, but really... It, they were embedded in truth, but there are certain things that, you know, weren't really synced up. And one of the things for me I had shaped in my mind was worship equals singing, singing equals worship, mm. or there's this mm. worship service, you know, and then mm -hmm. the rest of life, the rest of world. And the English language does an awful job with the word worship. Mm -hmm. You know, we use worship singing songs or we go, yeah. we're in a go to worship or a worship service or the, the worship building, whatever is going on. And here, this is calling us to a higher level of yeah. understanding what true worship yeah. is. So for me, recognizing this passage shaped my view of the concept of worship. Yes. To know that it is more than just singing, it is yeah. more than just going to a building for a service. And isn't it interesting yes. that it says, offer your bodies in right. worship. So it's obvious that when the apostle is bringing this up, He's not thinking at all of mm -hmm. only singing. Right. He's thinking of everything you do with your body is an act of worship. And spiritual service of mm -hmm. worship. Mm -hmm. There is this idea of living out an example. And we're going to get into it later, but the rest of Romans 12 really shows mm -hmm. where why this is a linchpin verse for the rest mm -hmm. of the context. But mm -hmm. how we're going to live out as a, a worship life of serving. Mm -hmm. and, and you do digging on that word, worship and serving which I've read books about, is is really deep. I think Mark's going to address that week after next. I think I so. I think he's going to be trying so. to come in on that worship idea yeah. and show. Neat. You know. Neat. Well, it's so cool to see that there's no there was no qualifier for when you're supposed to be in a form of worship. I mean, it's whatever, mm -hmm. wherever you're representing Christ now. Mm -hmm. So to, to really and embrace the importance of thinking of the body as a temple and thinking about, I mean, with young adults, with youth group, you know, you're trying to hit the idea of, well, the things you do, do things to you. Mm -hmm. And if we're representing Christ in these areas, we can really start to consider that as worship. Mm -hmm. um, anything we do, we're teaching somebody else mm -hmm. what we value. Mm -hmm. um, we're demonstrating what matters mm -hmm. to us and, and, and what we're ultimately serving. And so it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you have seen it, um, but uh, Chariots of Fire. The yeah. The movie mm. where mm. halfway through the movie, the... Uh, the main guy is talking to his sister, and she says, you have no business with this running thing. You need to get back to China. That's where you belong. And he said, I plan to go back to China as a missionary, of course. But he says, you have to understand, when I run, I feel his pleasure. And I think it wouldn't have been a far stretch for him to say, when I, feel, when I run, I feel his pleasure, and it's an act of worship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he's enjoying the person of the Lord who has given him this ability and opportunity, and it becomes a glory source for the Lord. Mm, that's great. Mm. That's but for awesome. me, the, the really the idea of the corral, the idea mm -hmm. of, of it is is God's word. And, yeah, and, that's right. and having our minds being renewed daily, regularly, to not be sucked into the way of the world's thinking. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and so to hear again stories from my community group, I keep coming back to that, but just it's it's encouraging to know that God is doing a work in his body mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. to if if we're pursuing you know the word of god and and mm -hmm. being open to hear from him he will change us mm -hmm. and and we will see <laughs> clearly what is the world's thinking and what is his way of thinking and being renewed in our minds to that i think is is vital to our growth well it's cool to see i mean you just mentioned it, the renewal of the minds from the verse right but then really getting in tune with god and and this to me this whole weekend was just about the awareness of where we're at now we look at where we've been in romans and even the application of this past week's sermon was just the question where do you need transformation mm -hmm. and it can be easy to want something we want application we want to be specific mm -hmm. tell me what pastor tell me what to do mm -hmm. but instead 
where do you need transformation? You need to figure this stuff out. You know, wrestle mm-hmm. with the Lord, wrestle mm-hmm. with with God over this stuff, and mm-hmm. it's not going to be this Sunday morning thing. It's mm-hmm. it's daily, uh, and and I just think that's that's really cool. Pastor John, was there any element of of this past weekend where where I don't know Sunday afternoon comes around, you're like, if I had more time, I would have liked to elaborate on this, or or sometimes somebody will come up to you after and be like, what did, what in the world did you mean by that? Was there any? Well. Um... This is one sermon where um, if I had let my mind go, I could have thought of so many other passages that have been life-changing, that have actually Mm -hmm. been Mm -hmm. points where I can remember where I was, and I remember how it altered the trajectory of my life in some way. And there have been a number, but those four were so instrumental to major areas of my life that I just thought if my purpose here is to illustrate Romans 12, 1 and 2 in action, I'm just going to use a few that address things like, do I have um, uh, do I have reason to be confident that I don't have to continue my sinful patterns? Mm. That was big for Christian Christians who feel like failure is always there, or uh, certainly the confidence of knowing that I would go to heaven, that I would have a home with Christ. Uh, all those particular things. So there really weren't any that I left on the cutting room floor. But it's mm. interesting. I had somebody come up to me after each service and propose their additional verses to expand the corral. <laughs> After great. the first service, yeah. uh, a guy came <laughs> up to me and, and he said, uh, John, uh, I, I would add uh, uh, Philippians 1.6. And he said, because for me, Philippians 1.6 makes it obvious that, that God's ability to bring to completion is God's ability to bring it to completion. So my hope and my confidence for Becoming like Christ is ultimately rooted in the fact that it's God who's going to do it. I said, great. I mean, that's a great one. I said, yeah. expand the wall of that yeah. corral. And then another <laughs> yeah. one, next service, a guy comes up and says, John, I would uh, I would just have to. I mean, when I'm hearing you talk, my mind is just flashing to 2 Timothy 2.13 because it tells mm. me that even if we were to deny him, he is faithful because he does not deny himself. And we're in Christ. And so he said, times when I've seen myself as such a failure, I've realized he's not going to deny me. He's still got my back. Mm-hmm. And so I said, at it, you know, wherever, <laughs> wherever there's this point that your hope is increased by the truth of, of God's mm-hmm. word, such that it cements a place of security with him. I think it belongs. On and the that's the stories that I got from my community group. You know, and, and again, it, it was, you know, Philippians four, set your mind or, or Colossians three, set your minds on things above, not on yeah. things of the earth. Yeah. Philippians four, be anxious for nothing. But yep. in everything, in prayer and supplication, let your request be known, known, known to God. And just one after another. And, and wouldn't you say that the corral is not just limited to these four points? Mm-hmm. Now, this, this, this is your yeah. personal journey. Yeah. And, and, it's a way of thinking. And, and Right. And it's what God has shaped for you in your walk, which mm-hmm. could be different for somebody else. Yeah. They might have come at it with, with even the same four verses, but mm-hmm. at different times of their mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. And, and here we could have four different verses, that, but it's all pointing to who God is in our understanding of him. And you ultimately said in the end, it brings us to a place of rest. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. how elaborate on, on, on that a little bit more. Well, I think that's huge because in every one of the areas where the, those verses that were central for me, every one of them was an area of anxiety. One of the things I struggle with just as a believer and as a person is anxiety. And so clearly the doubt that I would go to heaven because I could just tell internally that whatever God graded on, the mm. curve is not going to be so great that I'm going to get to go because I knew I had enough sin. Even as a young kid, I knew mm. I have enough sin that I don't deserve heaven. And so to me to be convicted of sin, but then to have God come in and say, hey, I got really good news for you. That's why it's called the gospel. It mm. is a free gift to all who believe, who who receive that what Christ did for them was God's provision for their sin and that he has given them a home in heaven. That that gave me rest in that area. Mm-hmm. Well, the last one I used was Matthew 6, 33. I was mm-hmm. in great concern about financial provision, anxious about it, worried about it. God's word comes in and says, if you'll seek me, my kingdom, my righteousness, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you what you need. Well, that was a place of rest. Mm-hmm. And I think that when we're talking about the corral, obviously there are uh, 31,000 verses in the Bible, and every one of them can be used on our corral, Sure, yeah, uh, you right. know, ultimately. But these central ones that I was trying to bring were ones that brought particular places of rest in significant areas of life, like, like that 
that I don't have to sit around in fear because of something that happened. I see mm. so many people I love mm. who go through a great hardship and it hangs over their head for the rest of their life. You know, mm. uh, it, 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 you take this awful thing that they had nothing to do with and it could hang over their life. I, you know, I have a, a daughter who is at Virginia Tech as a freshman, the last day of her classes that year was the day of the shooting mm -hmm. in, at Virginia Tech. Her next door neighbor was shot. Somebody she had gone running with a couple of days, mm -hmm. one, two days before. And, uh, and, and she actually originally, beginning of the semester, was supposed to be in the building where the shooting, the primary shooting took place and somehow things had been changed to where she was in a different building. Well now, that's an awful event. And none of the people involved had anything to do with causing that. But it could hound you, not just be a source of a limp or mm. a sorrow, but it could hound you to the point that you live anxiously, fearfully, and angrily for the rest of your life. Or yeah. Yeah. you can say, God's made a vow to me that he's even going to use that for good in my life. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean it's a good thing. It just means God's power is such that if I continue to look to him, he promises, I will use this for good in your life mm. if you love me and are called according to my purpose. So that's why I say rest. Mm. Because otherwise, I just live the rest of my life just like anxiously fearing yeah. when is another shoe going to drop yeah and, and and i don't think god wants us to have to live that way that's good mm -hmm. and and to your point also there's security in that oh my and rest Thank and so you. one of your points was the points of the crowd was eternal security that's you know, right. understanding that and right. here you're talking about kind of just health or physical security yes. Yes. or financial security yes. so every part of every part of life yeah. scripture speaks to that's right rest Right, right. Find me is what God is Amen. saying, you know, Amen. and, and so, and the, our closing song called us to that, mm -hmm. you know, I will wait for you, you know, take mm -hmm. us to that song passage mm -hmm. and in your word, I will rely. Mm -hmm. And so to, to have those thoughts and those words resting on us each and every day is going to allow us to be just hope filled and at rest. Yeah. And so I mm -hmm. love that, that call. And, and, you know, and, I, and at I, the I same, and at the same time though, like the rest of the Bible, not something that requires us to deny bad things. Yeah. Because God deals with, I, I remember having, I, I had a mentor in school who was so good at this. His life was really wrapped around this reality. He said, there's nothing too difficult to bring to God or to own. And, and that helped me because I think at that time, there were almost like things you don't want to say, uh, you know? Hmm. Uh, well, if I'm living around fearful of saying something, I... I'm just going to look at life because God's enough for life, you know, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. And I, I was going to say it, it, it doesn't, the, the scripture here, Romans 12, one and two doesn't really use the word rest, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I, I love this fresh, almost light bulb moment that we're having of how this draws us to a place of rest mm -hmm. by having our minds be renewed um, mm -hmm. and not being conformed to the world, mm -hmm. it ultimately brings us to rest. Mm -hmm. and, and and there's other scripture passages that speak to that, but this one here, I, I love how kind of you wrap it up and bring us to that place. Because there's many places that you can end a sermon like this. Yeah. Of, yeah. Go out and do it. Right. You know, go <laughs> work real hard and go out there and learn scripture. And, and you can have this kind of rules base, like you're saying, Caleb, you know, give me the list. But here, this is just rest. <laughs> which well, is and you say, you know, you say the, the word's not there. And it's true, the word rest is not there, but there is another word that actually relates to rest that is kind of uh, worth pointing out only because yeah. you made that comment. Yeah. At the very end, it says that you may prove what is the will of God, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. And the word perfect is a Greek word, teleos, that means that for which a thing was designed. Hmm. In other words, the desirable outcome. Well, uh, the city Jerusalem means city of peace. Right. Uh, Colossians tells us he is the God of all peace. Um, his desire is for us to know rest. Um, he said, I give you a peace that the world does not give. Mm. So it's obviously his desire for us to have a rest and a peace, mm. but he's saying in the world, you'll still have troubles. So he's not saying pretend that life's going to be 2.5 children, a white picket fence and a dog that doesn't bark. You're the, the peace I give is a peace that is available to you when the fence gets crashed in. Mm -hmm. The peace I give you is, is a peace that, that, that you have when the dog bites your neighbor. 
I mean, it's, it's, there's a piece that's meant to be bigger than our little plasticized version of that. So, so I think what he's saying is, John, as you get your mind renewed more and more day by day, day by day, you will know more and more my heart because that's what his will is. is it's, it's his heart, the heart of God. And it, and it's going to be bringing it to completion. And, and I love, uh, uh there's a, a book, uh, Cornelius Platinger wrote about 15, 20 years ago called Sin, Not the Way It's Supposed to Be. And the point he makes is that ever since Genesis 3.1, we have not seen the world the way it's supposed to be. Right. And as a, re, as a result, we only get little vestiges of peace and rest. Mm. But there's coming a day when that peace is going to be completely restored. Mm. And in the meantime, getting our mind where it needs to be is the one way that we can enjoy that peace and that rest that he offers, the mm. shalom of Jesus. Yeah. Now, there's the world's peace, uh, what the world thinks is true peace. That's right. And then there's God peace, being at peace with him, first of all, but then ultimately him wrapping up everything in completion. And there is that peace. And people are looking for, you know, wars to end and people are looking for governments to, to stop doing things, bad things to people and looking for, you know, racial and tensions and political stuff happening. And that's going to keep happening until Christ comes well, back. Well, I think it's I think it's easy to rest in evidence that God is working in your life. But I think there's a difference between that and just resting in who he is. Because when we mm-hmm. don't know how he's working, yeah. but we know he's a worker, yeah. that is where a lot I mean you're right to your point, we're renewing what we're thinking. You're 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 not deciphering that on that lens. It's a spiritual lens mm-hmm. through which all is happening to you and mm-hmm. I think that just speaks volumes to how we process what happens to us and mm-hmm. and have the again I, I've just been coming back to that word awareness all weekend the awareness of scripture the awareness of God and how he operates and who he is so that when we see things that are different than that we can yep. use use what we know to, to yep. kind of counteract that but well I know John you set up kind of next week a little bit and without giving it away <laughs> you, you know you're going to talk about a certain topic that might be controversial mm-hmm. like what do you see? How does that work within this idea of being conformed to the world? Well, I think when we encounter things that are really hairy and really messy, um, at least for me, sometimes I uh, I don't find rest. Um, I just feel the consternation of arguments on both sides of a given fence. And it seemed to me, as I was looking at this topic of being transformed through the renewing of your mind, I thought, well, gosh, there is an area in my life that needs to be transformed. Hmm. And I'm sure it's partially, you know, partially transformed, but I got to believe that it's still in some ways conformed to the world. Well, as I thought about that area more and more, I thought, wait a minute, I think most of us probably have the potential to do what... uh, uh, Martin Luther called, uh, he, he said, truth is like a drunken man riding a horse. First you fall off one side, then you fall <laughs> off the other. And so I was thinking, are there any areas that are potentially fall off on either side among Christians where we're really having a hard time getting on the back of the horse? And uh, an area came to mind through the mm-hmm. course of some reading and thinking and all. And and so I literally, uh, this is going to, you know, I would love to tell you what I'm going to do, but I don't really know. I mean, I know where I'm <laughs> yeah. going, but I don't know no, where good. it's going. Yeah. And, but the goal will be to say, how do we take a difficult area and Romans 12, 1 and 2 it? How do we take a difficult area and say, I'm going to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him as a reasonable service of worship. And I'm going to take a look and find out where might my mind be conformed to the world? Because I happen to know that in the area I'm planning for us to discuss I can see my mind getting conformed in either of at least two separate directions, both of which ultimately Mm. by themselves become unhelpful. Mm. And so my thought is, man, I Mm. need some work to be able to be transformed enough to be in a useful place Mm. uh, about this. So I'm hoping it'll be a good practice run for all of us. And this is not just a singular topic that is one and done. I I posed this question to community group last night, and I said, "I I think I know where John is going. I pose the question of what are some things that overall the church and us as believers and Christians need a, a, a check in mm-hmm. our heart, need a spiritual check of mm-hmm. what is our way of thinking and what does God really think about yes. this? 
and let me tell you, we've got a sermon series of like five or six or seven different topics that came yeah. from that conversation right. and answering that question. And they're all very good ideas and topics that, man, you're, us believers, I, we need I, to I may, have a different I may thinking. Ask, I, I, I may ask Caleb to, to summarize that little quote that you just said, like grab it electronically and put it up before <laughs> the sermon this Sunday, because yeah. hmm. the reality is the more that I work on it, the more humbled I am to realize, mm. oh my, we could spend all summer right. mm. on talking about how we think about challenging topics in an effort to Romans 12, 1 and 2. It. Mm. How do we really present ourselves and how do we really be conformed to, not the world, but to to the, to God's way of thinking? Yeah, not, not our way of thinking and not our bent. What right. we think is right is right. What is God? It's what does the word say and really... Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. I'm. Yeah, I'm well, we'll be praying for you. Please so. do. I, We're yeah. gonna go. So you'll you'll go like four or five hours Sunday I, I, morning. I, I, <laughs> honestly, you you say that, but I w I was lying in bed Sunday night thinking, man, I really hope they don't stop me anytime before three hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll really, they will. I promise. They're going week. to. There you go. So you we could we could do a longer form podcast for yeah. sure. That's great. Mark, what's coming up? Um, what do we need to? Get in the ears and eyes of the listeners. And the oh, viewers. there are so many things coming up. Spring I mean, and summer at FBC, man. I thankful, tell you what. you know, and more and more people are getting vaccinated, but they're coming out of their houses. Mm. And, and here at church, we're wanting to do more things. So the events are starting to, to pile up in a good way that, you know, we're going to be able to have some fun together during the summer with these series called Fellowship Together activities. Um, you know, even having just the seniors of fellowship regathering in a week and a half is going to be neat. Yeah. Having, you know, youth group and Keystone, they're, you're doing your things. And to have Kids on Worship present a musical outdoors on Sunday night, May 2nd. So just go to the website because there's a lot of neat things happening here in the body. Getting plugged into uh, community groups and discipleship groups. By the way, we, we had this FBC household update card yes, that we put out there just this past week, and it's also digitally online, we had over oh, well over 500 names and just the cards come back. So thank you, because because of COVID, it's very challenging for the leaders of our church to know who's a part of our body mm -hmm. and how can they spiritually care for our body, and they really deeply want to do that. So you guys listening, if you haven't, go fill that out so we know mm -hmm. who you are. But part of that backside of the card was, you know, are you part of a discipleship group? And over a hundred names came back saying that they want to be part awesome. of mm -hmm. So praise God. just praise God for that. And so now we can just pray for more leaders and, and develop people to be able to help come alongside of others to disciple. So yeah. there is, it's exciting things happening um, mm -hmm. in the church. FBCVA.life has a lot of the things and uh, just be in tune for that. It's all over the place. We love being a part of your week. Again, thank you to the listeners and viewers. As a reminder, you can find all the content FBC is pushing out, including Sermon Spotlight. Just Google Sermon Spotlight. It'll pop right up on all the podcast platforms. Uh, the fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love and God bless.